Hello, my name is Kate Nichols, and this is the first lecture in a virtual unit on optics designed for AP Physics 2 students. Um, the topic of this lecture is perception and images, and the essential question is how do our eyes and brain work together to make meaning out of electromagnetic waves? So the human eye is the organ that we use to detect these electromagnetic waves around us and give us the sense of sight. Eyes are obviously pretty complicated, but for physics, the main thing you need to understand is that if we want to see something, a piece of light known as a photon has to go through the pupil in your eye and passes through a bunch of goo and then it hits eventually some cells in the back of your eye in a membrane called the retina. You'll see in the diagram I drew an arrow. That's light that kind of starts down here, down, down below your eye. And when it passes through the pupil, it actually hits the back top of your retina in this case because that light is traveling in a straight line as light photons do. The light will hit a couple different kinds of cells, cones and rods. The purpose of a rod is to detect the brightness of the light, which is basically the number of photons that are hitting it every second. And the cones can detect the frequency or the color of the light based on um, how often they vibrate when they are hit by those photons. Uh, but the other really interesting thing in physics is that the brain can tell um, where the light came from based on which of these cells are triggered. So based on the fact that that, that that cell near the top of your retina was triggered, your brain's able to work its way backwards and figure out what direction the light came from. And that's a really important adaptation because we can tell where things are located based on where their light came from. So why do we have two eyes then? Well, many of you probably know the answer to this question already. It's something known as depth perception. Uh, another name for this in geometry is called triangulation. The idea is uh, you've got two eyes. Objects around you um, are generating light or they're reflecting light. The banana is probably not generating its own light, but it is reflecting the sun's light. So it's sending these photons off in all directions, right? Everybody in the classroom can see the banana. So photons are going everywhere. Um, but one of those photons goes through the pupil and hits the back of your eye. Well, voila, we can see the banana. Um, and your brain is smart enough to know that the light from that banana traveled in a straight line. So now that eye knows, at least along a single path, what direction the banana is. Of course, if you've taken geometry before, you know that your other eye is going to get a different light beam. It's going to get a separate photon, um, and that photon is traveling at a slightly different angle than the first one was. Your brain actually does geometry then and triangulates or figures out that those two lines intersect at a single point, and that point is the location of the banana. And so then you get the banana because you can reach out and grab it. You know where it is. Uh, the other reason we have two eyes from a biologist perspective is that vision is such an important um, adaptation for humans that having a second eye gives you a spare just in case anything bad happens to your first. But triangulation is a really important adaptation as well. So a quick little activity for you to try um, to see how important triangulation is. If you've got a pen or pencil, just hold it up in front of you um, and then close one eye and take your finger in front of the other eye and try to touch the pen. It should be pretty easy. You should be able to do it, although maybe not super fast. Okay, um, And that's because your eye knows the light from the pen is going in a straight line, and so you know what path the pen is on. You can follow it directly to the pen. However, if you put your finger on this side all right, and try to go sideways, now your, lights, your eye is really confused because it can't just connect the finger and the pen, and it's much harder to actually hit the pen the first time when you're going from the side. Um, a slightly different activity, but just time yourself, how long does it take you with one eye to find that pen versus if you have open both your eyes, you should be able to touch the pen right away because every moment in time, your eye is calculating where is the finger, where is the pen, where are they together? As opposed to when you just have one eye, it's not able to kind of do those same things. So if two eyes are so great, why don't we have three eyes? Why don't we just grow some sort of tentacle and have an extra eye over there? Um, well, no matter where the eyes are located, your eyes are going to agree on the location of the intersection of those photons, which means if I had a third eye, it would provide another data point, but that data point would intersect in the same spot, which means, and this becomes important later on, you only need two rays to find out where an object is. You don't need to see three pieces of light. You only need two pieces of light to locate an object in space. It also means that everybody in the classroom who is observing an object or everyone in the world that's observing an object agrees on its location because no matter where your eyes are located those light rays appear to originate on the same spot 
Um, so as long as the light isn't being blocked by another object, everybody should agree on where the object is. Uh, another reason we don't have three eyes, um, speaking from experience, is because nine months is plenty of pregnancy and growing extra eyes would probably take extra investments um, in our offspring. So two eyes is plenty. So the human species evolved in a world in which when we saw light that was yellow with a particular edges and particular patterns, we knew it was a banana, right? Light coming from a banana always had a banana behind it. Um, but as we've developed new skills, tools, and technologies, humans have actually learned that we can manipulate light, that we can bend light, and that we can bounce light so that um, we can make it look like there's a banana without there actually being a banana there. That banana on your computer screen is a great example. Um, this is known as an image. It's got the same photons that a real banana would be emitting, but there's not actually a banana there on your computer screen. It just tricks your brain into thinking that because it does the same thing in your retina as a banana's light would do. Um, so lenses and mirrors and other optical devices are the tools that we use. The long and short of it is that reality is an illusion and we're going to spend most of the rest of this unit learning about um, images and illusions. All images can be classified or categorized in a few different ways. Um, the first way we classify images is whether they are what's called upright versus inverted. So if we've got any Game of Thrones fans out there, this is an upright image of Cal Drogo because he looks like a human. We are used to humans looking with the head on the top and the feet on the bottom. And of course, an inverted image, he would be flipped upside down. Um, so that is the first way we can classify images, upright versus inverted. The second way we classify images is called magnification. It's actually going to be a new variable we'll talk about a little bit later on, uh, the big letter M. And magnification tells how big the image is compared to the object that it's representing. If you have an, ob an image that has a magnification of one, that means that it is basically life size. So if that eye was exactly the same size as called Drogo's real eye, it would have a magnification of one. If an object has, or an image has a magnification of more than one, that means that the object is smaller than the image. So the image is blown up or enlarged. If an object has a magnification that is less than one, then the object is actually bigger than the image. So the image will be shrunk or teeny tiny. So that would be an example on the far right of a magnification of 0.3. And the last way we classify images is whether we call those images real images or virtual images. Um, we'll learn a little bit more about what this means later on, but uh, a rule of thumb is that real images are images that can be captured or projected onto a piece of paper or screen. So if you've ever um, like seen uh, a movie, obviously, at a movie theater, that's a real image because it's being projected on a screen. Uh, real images form when the light rays from an object converge at a location, which means come together. If you've ever taken a magnifying glass um, and gone outside, you've noticed that you can make this really hot, bright little spot, but maybe what you didn't realize is you were actually making an image. The object you were making an image of was the sun. So you were taking the sun and you were making a teeny tiny image of a sun on a piece of paper. And that image is actually still hot because the, the energy in the sun's light rays um, are converged or brought together. But that's not actually just a bright spot. It's actually a picture, an image of the sun, a little bright yellow sun on your uh, board or whatever it is that you're shining the light onto. The second kind of image is known as a virtual image, and these images um, will not be captured on a piece of paper or a screen. They just look like they're there. Your brain thinks they're there, but it's not actually something that you could put on a screen. Um, light rays appear to come from a spot, um, but if you actually went to that spot, you wouldn't actually see those locations. A couple examples of virtual images. Um, one is a regular mirror. So when you look at yourself in the mirror, um, you see yourself behind the mirror. But if somebody went back there behind the mirror, there obviously wouldn't be anything for them to capture on a screen. So that's a virtual image. Rainbows are another example of virtual images. People are always trying to go capture the rainbow, but there's not actually a location. You can't put a screen and get that image to, to stick on that screen because they're virtual images as well. So a quick little activity that I wish we were in class together to do, but hopefully you've got the materials to do at home on your own. You need a magnifying glass of any kind. Even a pair of glasses might work depending on whether uh, what kind of vision you have, but if you can find a magnifying glass and a piece of paper, uh, go find a window in your house. It's better if it's kind of dark outside and bright outside. If you take your magnifying glass and hold it 
facing the window and you get a white piece of paper and hold it behind the magnifying glass and you move the magnifying glass in and out, eventually you'll notice that you're able to get an image of whatever you can see out your window on your paper. It's kind of looks like a movie screen. It's, it's kind of amazing. Um, and the cool thing about that image is it's obviously real because you're catching it on a piece of paper. It's also inverted. So everything happening outside your window is upside down. You could have your, your friend or parent go out there and you'd see a little image of them dancing around upside down in your paper. Give it a try if you can. All right, that's it for the first lecture. Uh, do take a minute and just think about a conclusion or jot down your answer to the essential question, which is how do our eyes and brain work together to make meaning out of electromagnetic waves? What are the critical things that we've learned in this lecture? And uh, thank you guys for your time. Oh, a little uh, side note. I put a optional link to a um, video where someone shows a number of optical illusions, which are really cool um, images typically that basically confuse our brain and make it see things that's not actually seeing. Um, and so if you're interested in learning about optical illusions, that's just purely for fun, but um, please enjoy and check out the video. Thanks.